Not only will your quality of life suffer, but you will literally die sooner if you don't address your low testosterone. Low testosterone levels are not something that you can address naturally. Ignoring the low T problem is robbing yourself of the quality of life you deserve. So what are you waiting for? Trust me when I say this, my name is Dr. Jones and I have clinics that service across the nation and me, my medical practitioners have been helping men just like you for the last decade conquer low levels of testosterone in a functional format so that they get the best possible results. Not being able to have kids is a myth that we're going to squash by the end of this video so you have nothing to concern yourself with. So let's get right in. Okay, so I want to start with my personal story with testosterone therapy. So I actually started TRT in my uh, lower 30s. I think it was like 34, 33. Um, which is young. I'd say average age for men when they start is probably 35 to 38, which is actually younger than what I think most people probably assume. But the brain fog, brain fog for me was the biggest symptom that I had. I mean, kind of paralleled with tiredness too. Three to four cups of coffee sometimes to get through the freaking day. And um, it was a nightmare. And I didn't have it in my 20s. It really started in my young 30s and just hit this point at 33, 34, where I said that was it. And ironically, this was when I started my mom on bioidentical hormone replacement therapy. Our clinic started offering it too as well. And that naturally, it just made sense. And what a game changer it was for me. Uh, in the in the space of energy levels and brain fog, so I'll be I'll definitely be optimized on testosterone personally for the rest of my life. Understanding how not only the quality of life that it provides, but also the improvement into your health, which is something that I certainly want to educate you guys on by the end of this video. Okay, so I think this graph says it all: complications of low testosterone, and this list is growing and it's growing rapidly, high blood pressure, high blood sugar, cholesterol, weight gain, shifts in body composition because you notice you're not retaining muscle mass, you're not able to build it, sexual dysfunction. I know a lot of you are thinking, well, my, my penis works great. <laughs> so erectile dysfunction is at the end of the list of all the other complications and all the other symptoms of low testosterone. You don't need that much fuel in the tank for your penis to work and to function. So if you are at the point where you have erectile dysfunction, then you are likely progressed down to very, very low levels. Um, it's very common for us to optimize men before it even gets that bad. But strength, belly fat deposition too as well. Quality of life is huge because testosterone, think about it, that archetypical, confident 25-year-old, 22-year-old, or even 18-year-old, they have a high level of testosterone. And I can tell you when your testosterone levels are optimized, you have more confidence, you have more swagger, you have more motivation, you have more follow through, right? Think of low T as that apathetic, I give up uh, sort of weakness. And as men, we need to be masculine, strong men. And in order, one of the things that is needed to do that is an optimal level of testosterone. Just why are our levels of hormones plummeting? And they are plummeting like crazy. Uh, sperm counts and testosterones. We're going to talk about uh, the hormone levels, specifically testosterone more so, but this is part and parcel with lower levels of sperm. I mean, infertility and, and difficulties with achieving pregnancy uh, levels are skyrocketing right now. And really the big thing that we can trace, the commonality here are these EDCs, these endocrine disrupting chemicals. So if you look at the middle here, you see that this is the centerpiece. And then the, the mid-level kind of oval bubbles, those are the categories of EDCs. And then outside of these bubbles are various exposure levels, things that we are interacting with on the daily that are contributing to uh, exposing us to these various toxic crap. So phthalates have been shown to have toxic effects on reproductive health, including testicular damage and developmental malformations. So phthalates, as you can see here from the chart on that top right here, personal care products, plastics, and, and various manufacturer resins. So we're going to talk about plastics because th that also is a big exposure of BPA, but please, oh, please stop using plastics and get, take, make an investment because I know it's plastics are cheap, but in terms of Tupperware, get yourself higher quality glass Tupperware with the clickable lids or the rubber lids, best investment you can make as far as food. And, and really at this point, there's no need to be exposing to 
exposing yourself to harmful chemicals like these that you can find in plastics. I would say plastics are probably one of the more common exposures that we just, it's really easy to overthink this. Phthalates and BPAs, bisphenols, have a lifetime effects of lowering our endocrine function from pregnancy exposure. This is wild. So no longer are we talking about short-term exposure causing short-term damage, right? Think of mold in the house, right? Can derail your health, but when we remove the mold, and we do a little cleanup on the health, improve detoxification, we could pretty much almost always fully recover. But now we're talking about a situation where that's no longer an option. So mo mother is exposed to these chemicals and therefore the fetus, which then becomes a human being and for the rest of its life pays the price. We're talking about permanent reductions in endocrine function for the rest of their life, potentially due to the devastating effects of both phthalates and BPAs. How wild is this, right? What an impact. And, and look, why this is happening, how the powers that be let this happen. I mean, that's a whole nother conversation for another time, another place. But this is the reality of what's in front of us. And this is how serious this is. And, and I know for some of you watching this, you maybe never heard of this. And I know how scary this can be. And for some of the rest of you, you're like, yeah, I, I'm aware of this. And it's like, what do we do? Well, we're, we're going to get to that here in a bit. So per floral alkyl substances or PFASs have been associated with hormone disruption, specifically testosterone levels. And I think, I, I think you guys get it. I could sit here and probably spend an hour going through the various different chemical exposures um, and the various sources. And you absolutely should do your best. You should put your best foot forward and put the best effort that you possibly can at reducing your exposure to various endocrine disrupting chemicals take the time, do the studies. We could provide you plenty of other resources and videos, but at the end of the day, no matter how healthy of a lifestyle that you choose to live, no matter how much effort you put forward to be able to reduce your exposure so that you can have a higher quality of life and be more healthy, you are not going to avoid the endocrine disrupting effects and the testosterone lowering implications, which are going to deteriorate your quality of life. So we got to optimize men. We got to optimize and replace the lower levels of testosterone. If you want to be the best version of yourself, I have to have to have to end the conversation about endocrine disrupting chemicals by talking about EMFs, electromagnetic fields. I mean, just think about it. What 50 years ago, we didn't even have a cell phone, right? It was, and, and now you have cell phone signals, strengths that are getting significantly stronger you walk down the street and you're being hidden with, just think about how many Wi-Fi's when you pass a corporate building, the amount of Bluetooth devices. I don't know about you, but me personally, I put my phone on airplane mode and it is not by my head. Um, I do not sleep near my Wi-Fi router that is in my office away from my bed. And as much as we can have a discussion as to whether or not this is actually proven to be dangerous or not, this is like the whole supplement argument. Like I would rather find out 10 years later I was wrong and these things are completely safe and look back and go, oh, okay, well, I wasted some energy avoiding them versus 10 years later with freaking brain cancer wondering what could I have done to prevent this. And so the reality is that and personally, in my opinion, I think EMFs are devastating. The impacts are huge. And the damage uh, that these uh, EMFs can do are, um, are, are very, very severe. And, and I recommend you go watch the documentary, 5G Apocalypse. Um, even if half the stuff in that documentary are true, um, I think that it's a, it's a very scary situation. And so little tips and tricks like that, like not sleeping with your wife near your Wi-Fi router, putting your, your, your cell phone in, in Bluetooth mode and or airplane mode are just some of the little things that we do to help coach our patients, the tips and tricks that we can do to improve quality of life. Okay. So this chart right here is a uh, comparison. You look on the bottom just from the eighties, but it gets even lower before eighties to the nineties to the two thousands. And this trend continues, but we can look and see median total testosterone and bio available free testosterone, right? It's clear in front of us here that we see this trend of testosterone levels plummeting in men. You can see it right here in the study too as well. Total testosterone levels are plummeting for men and nobody's talking about it. Nobody's doing anything about it. And it's a damn shame because the problems, it's you individual men out there that are suffering because of this problem that no one's talking about. So as we can see here in the reference range, total, let's just focus on total testosterone levels, right? 
So this reference range, which is supposed to be this range that tells us that we're in this ideal range, look how far it is from the actual optimal range. And we're defining optimal as the upper end of the range that men used to have 50 or 60 years ago. So we're not making these numbers up. These aren't putting you into super physiological numbers, which I'm not a fan of, and I think could have some implications that could be negative. What I am saying is let's just bring your levels back. Let's go to the optimal range. Absolutely. Right. Because it's, it's called the range and you know, for, for a reason, like we know that those are ranges. So getting you back to the optimal range of what men used to have 50 years ago to me is going to give you the best shot for the highest quality of life. Given the fact that no matter how hard we try, we're going to be fighting tooth and nail to not be impacted by various toxic exposures. Lab Corp, one of the biggest labs around, just take a look at these reference ranges, prior reference ranges for total testosterone, 348 to 1197. Now they're down to 264, 264 to 916. That is insane, right? To quote Dr. John Chrysler, the normal range is found through pure statistical means and has nothing to do with health and happiness. So what does he mean by that? Let's, let's dive into that because it's important that you understand a little bit about how reference ranges are established, how we figure out reference ranges. So the reference range is that number, that range that is next to the lab results. That is a quick way for your doctor or yourself to say, okay, great. I'm within a good range. I'm, I'm quote unquote healthy. But like Dr. John Chrysler said, that reference range is not actually representative of the ideal for you. This is a pure mathematical formula that's applied. Um, it's a called a standard deviation specifically where they're looking at men in your age category, even in your demographic and comparing you, comparing you to that group. So even if you're optimal, you're optimal out of that group. Well, we just established that that group has plummeting testosterone levels. And so doing good out of a shitty group, I mean, you guys get the point. I mean, this is a huge problem. And again, no one's really talking about it. And, you know, I, I, it's up to you to figure out why that is. It just happens to be so convenient that symptoms of low testosterone, anxiety, depression, erectile dysfunction, oh, there happens to be a nice handy drug readily and available for you. But hey, maybe that's just complete coincidence. Okay, I love this quote here. We pulled 25 hospital laboratory reference ranges at random and found 17 different low and high normal values. The low reference value for testosterone ranged from 130 to 450, 350% difference. So finally, age adjusted testosterone reference values should be eliminated since testosterone values decline with age. It makes no sense to define normal by comparing individuals to a population of similarly aged men who have also experienced declining values. Again, Dr. Kreiser um, has done a tremendous amount of work in this space and uh, I, I couldn't agree more. We need to redefine optimal. We need to look away from these reference ranges. And if you have a practitioner that you're working with right now, who's looking at those reference ranges and telling you that it's, you know, God forbid they're telling you it's dangerous to, to get your levels to a thousand, for example, then you need to find a new practitioner because they are likely not understanding the overwhelming data behind how testosterone, this isn't just a quality of life. This is optimal health. And we're going to get into all that. According to the FDA, a minimum number of total testosterone is 300. Strictly interpreted, that would mean a man with 229 would be hypogonadism would be the medical term for low testosterone, while a man with 301 is normal. This is simply not a sensible approach. The Endocrine Society agrees with this, but at least has stated that we need to do more than numbers. We need to look at the symptoms too as well. The sim and, and honestly, at this point, after you know working with my medical practitioner for the past 10 years, you don't even need labs. We can look at the telltale symptoms and tell right off the bat likely that a man is suffering with low testosterone. So I like this chart here because this gives us an idea of what to expect. So we have two things going on here. It is normal to have your testosterone levels decrease as you age, okay? But what is not normal is us to be exposed to the extremely toxic shit that society has put out there for us and 
you know, again, how it happened, why it happened. That's for another time, another place. But we see with the blue chart, the normal expected now exacerbated decrease. And ideally with hormone replacement therapy, HRT, all we're doing is bringing the grain level, not to some super physiological level. I want to be clear, but just to optimal. Let's get you back to being an optimal man. And some of you, even in your 20s, never had an optimal level because of the toxic stuff that your mom might have been exposed to during pregnancy. So again, this is a this is a, a scary. It's scary. Some of the men don't even know what what feeling like optimal really is. And other and, and, and many men though did and and lost that over time. So in any case, you have a chance, you have an opportunity in front of you. What are you freaking waiting for? Let's look at some of this data because I think you'll find it very powerful. Boston University School of Medicine, testosterone treatment, as well as lifestyle changes can slow the halter progression of metabolic syndrome, type two diabetes, cardiovascular disease, erectile dysfunction. Note lifestyle choices. There's a ton of clinics out there that really just all they give a shit about is putting you on TRT and that's it. And I think one of the things that really separates us is not only that we specialize in weight loss and fat loss, which is we're going to end today's video talking a lot about that, but more importantly, that we coach our patients and we provide them a format where they can get live training, live coaching, get their questions answered every single week and help implement a realistic amount of sustainable lifestyle choices. Cause I can give you a list of a thousand things, but how are you going to be able to get out there into real life and implement it? And that's what we do with our patients. Alzheimer's, Alzheimer's prevention. Now testosterone is linked to a potential prevention mechanism by uh, preventing the development of these harmful plaques. So literally neurodegenerative diseases are likely enhanced by having optimal levels of testosterone. Uh, Medical College in Virginia, a study showed 42% improvement in physical rehabilitation in older men. I think we know that strength. And by the way, uh, as you can see in this study right here, all cause mortality improves with having more muscle mass in the body. So the more muscle mass you have, the longer you will live. Now, testosterone on its own is not going to give you more muscle mass, although you, it, it will, but, but with resistance training. Now we have this exponentially increased potential for more muscle mass. You got to do both. You got to lift the weights, but I promise you testosterone not only gets you the better results, but it actually makes it more fun and exciting because you see your results coming quite literally like you were when you were younger. Significant improvements in testosterone therapy. Dr. Jonathan Wright from Oxford University. Testosterone therapy improved the ability to remember, to concentrate, to have mental acuity, ending that moodiness men literally become anxious and depressed when they're lower when when their testosterone levels lower brain fog energy anxiety depression belly fat motivation guys what are you waiting for like this is not quality of life and with testosterone therapy you potentially have the opportunity to get rid of these i wanted to interrupt for a quick minute i have a free peptide guide. So everything you're learning today, we put it down the protocols and exactly what you need to know. You can access that by clicking the link at the beginning of my uh, description of the video. Now back to the show. Increases in muscle mass with testosterone. So they did a study looking at men using a leg press and lo and behold, increased levels of testosterone, improved strength. I mentioned that study already. Like I said, I really want to highlight the fact that resistance training when the results are slow, <laughs> it's tough. It's tedious. But resistance training, when you're seeing the results, when you're seeing your strength improve, when you're seeing the changes in your physical body as driven by increases in testosterone from therapy, it just makes it so much easier. And, and, and ultimately, we need to make resistance training a permanent lifestyle. They're just part of your routine. Like there's no way around it. Get your ass into the gym. I need you to lift weights three days a week. If you feel unmotivated now, I promise you when we get you on T, you're going to feel more motivated and I'm going to help coach you and guide you to make it easy for you. With the loss of testosterone, the nervous system, muscles, vascular system, the penis weaken, less sensitivity, less power, less intense ejaculation. So you've been living with your penis for the last 30 years at least, right? So you may not think that you have erectile dysfunction, but you probably have understandably so lost the ability to recall how powerful your erections used to be. So quality of life. One important, you know, you know, the saying guys, happy wife, happy life. Well, happy wife, 
depends at least one piece of it being a good sex life among many other things. I wish it was that easy. Trust me, but <laughs> that's probably why I'm not married, but, but look, your health and your happiness also comes from a good sexual um, life and being able to perform and know that you're satisfying your woman or your partner is a male intrinsic driven trait. And so your quality of life, your health mentally and physically will improve when your penis functions more optimally. The European Journal of Cellular Biology in 82, the administration of testosterone uh, into these muscles improved the nerves and muscles that were atrophied. Um, again, I, you, you got to do the resistance training with it. I would never recommend testosterone therapy without also a plan to get out there and improve quality of life through lifestyle choices, not only resistance training, but also improving your diet and all that. And, Again, we're going to end today's presentation with that. Mood disorders, men, it's not just women who are cranky, bitchy, and moody. Men suffer from mood disorders too as well. Levels of anxiety, levels of depression. And I can tell you right now, one of the most powerful therapies that I've seen, having done functional medicine, having done regenerative medicine, having seen it all, mental health improves dramatically with testosterone. We won't even create a care plan for somebody who's coming to us for mental health improvement without looking at their testosterone levels and without likely putting them on therapy. But for example, our functional approaches, we're going to put them on a high dose of fish oil. We're going to add some extra DHA essential fatty acids. We're going to put them on some powerful anti-inflammatory supplements. These are just some of the, 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 the functional components that we do that we coach our men to improve quality of life, specifically mental health issues like anxiety, depression. It is all too common that we see our men um, get off anxiety medications, reduce depression medications, because we've been able to both target the testosterone path as well as the functional lifestyle path. Virtually every obese patient is deficient in testosterone. Now, whether or not it's the obesity that caused the lower T or the lower T caused the obesity, I think they're both intertwined and it's impossible to say one causes the other. Um, I think that they both drive each other. So it's a circular sort of relationship there. And uh, we're going to, we're going to end today's talk talking about weight loss. So I'll save it more for there. But if you are obese and you are overweight, you can't just start TRT and get the benefit and, and, and still be lazy. I'm sorry. It's going to be easier to decrease laziness with testosterone. That is one of the magical benefits but I can't tell you how many men out there get on, get on TRT and they work with a clinic that doesn't drive and coach and, and embrace these sort of lifestyle changes. And so these men still end up not really making big changes. And I can tell you right now, starting TRT, if you are overweight and don't start to lose that weight immediately, you will run into problems, specifically aromatization of your testosterone into estrogen, converting your testosterone over to estrogen pathways. And that, you know, that you do need a healthy amount of conversion, but excess conversion, inflammatory processes take place and you just don't feel the benefit as much as you would if your body fat levels were closer to a healthy amount. And testosterone will help you alongside other aspects. And we actually specialize in lasting weight loss. And so we'll definitely talk about that. Okay. So what is a hormone? What is testosterone? So a hormone is a chemical messenger right? Your body, you specifically have glands. In this case, the testes produces testosterone, the Leydig cells on the testes. And it is a chemical that floats around in your bloodstream and hormones float around your bloodstream and they activate certain other organs, certain other tissues and other processes in your body. And with a big long list of symptoms that are alleviated with improving testosterone levels, it's, it's easy to see that you have testosterone receptors in the majority of your body. And so these chemical messengers are very powerful and that's what testosterone is, is our most important male hormone. Now, side note, in case you're a little curious in the science, it's actually not the most potent. One of the derivatives of testosterone, uh, it's called dihydrotestosterone or DHT is actually more responsible for making a man a man, but we don't have to worry about it or get into that because some simply supplementing with testosterone will then cause the, the, the pathways to take place and conversions from testosterone into things like DHT um, and other important metabolites. The awareness is a problem, right? This is a bigger deal for women, the lack of awareness and support for women through menopause, 
because of some some horrible studies that were done that essentially led us to believe that hormones are dangerous for women. But for men, we don't have sort of this particular reason per se, yet there's still a lack of awareness. I've already showed you guys that we are aware studies have shown, and we see it very clearly, plummeting testosterone levels, plummeting sperm counts. We're on the brink of infertility and population collapse because of how devastating the, the, the issues are with infertility and how much feminization there is of our men, right? And I don't want to go too far down this path as get into one of those kind of conversations, but there's nothing wrong with a masculine man. Yes, there's toxic masculinity. There's toxic, there's just toxic people, but having more testosterone and having a society with men with higher levels of testosterone, just optimal means that stuff gets done. Society functions better. And the same can be saying, can be said for women too, as well, healthier women, more optimized too, as well, less suffering with menopausal. It's, it's no different. This isn't gender specific. And I'm not trying to pinpoint or put men on any sort of pedestal by any means. I'm just stating a fact that we unfortunately live in a society that's not doing anything about it. These doctors do not get the level of training and hormone therapy that they should be getting. And this is why clinics like ours and many other clinics exist across the nation, specializing in these treatments where patients pay out of pocket to get the quality of life they deserve. Testosterone therapy is not a drug, okay? There, there are drug versions of it, but when you work with a clinic like ours and many of these TRT clinics, we are getting our testosterone from what's called a compounding pharmacy, not the big pharmaceutical companies. So the biologically identical testosterone that we administer, which is technically synthetic because it's attached to an ester. But when that ester is cleaved, it's metabolized in the body and you have bioidentical testosterone. Those compounded medications are not regulated by the FDA. They are regulated by state pharmacy boards, but state pharmacy boards still need to adhere to standards uh, that are set forth by the FDA and the pharmacy boards themselves. So I've never seen an issue. And the only time I've seen issue in this space with, with testosterone and, and peptides too as well, and I have other videos, if you're curious about peptides, uh, check out this video right here, Peptide 101. But when people are going online to research companies and buying testosterone illegally and literally trying to dose themselves and figure it out. And I, and I respect and appreciate the, the drive to take matters into your own hands, but that is dangerous and you can kill yourself. So please, please, please find a clinic where we do comprehensive blood work with you, where you have a communication line, where you get coaching, where you get your questions answered so that you can achieve um, a, where you can achieve an optimal level of service and more importantly, drive towards that path of optimal health. So how do we diagnose low testosterone? So yes, we do labs, but I'll tell you, I'll tell you guys right now, we don't need labs. When I talk to a man and I, and I ask him this question, I go, all right, here's the symptoms. Let me know if you have half of those symptoms. Increased anxiety, increased depression, brain fog, uh, lower levels of energy, decreases in belly fat, decreased response to workouts, um, lower sex drive, lower motivation, lower confidence, erectile dysfunction. And they, you got at least five or six of those, you likely have lower levels of testosterone. But we'll still do the labs. We'll make sure that we do a comprehensive evaluation nonetheless. So we like to start with a general um, health marker. Look at the CBC, look at the metabolic panel too as well. We're going to look at the lipid panel and then we're going to look at your A1C because weight loss and metabolic health, if you're, especially if you're diabetic or already pre-diabetic or on your path towards it. And then we look at your prostate with, with a marker called PSA. Of course, we'll look at total and free testosterone levels and um, uh, estradiol, right? To make sure that we're monitoring your estrogen. And then we do a complete full thyroid panel. This is crucial because thyroid is senior to testosterone. And so many clinics I see miss the boat. And so many of you men out there that maybe stopped therapy because you didn't feel good. Um, you started the therapy and you never felt better. And your testosterone levels got high. In many cases, if you get your testosterone optimized, but you don't get your thyroid optimized, you're still going to have a lot of the same issues, specifically energy, brain fog, difficulty losing weight, things of that nature. So we do a very comprehensive thyroid panel because in many cases, the thyroid issues are missed. And I have a whole separate set of videos. You can reach out to us and we can send them to you regarding proper thyroid management.
So I want to talk, I told you I would talk to you about permanent shutdown. So for, let's just create two categories here. If you're done having kids, nothing to worry about it. Go live the quality of life, get on testosterone therapy and be awesome. (laughs) For my younger men, right? And I fall into this category. um, You have some options in front of you. So if you are planning on having kids uh, in the next short, near future, if you will, uh, six months, if it's, if it's, I would say if it's less than, than maybe six to nine months, I wouldn't even start a therapy. I would wait till you have your kids and be done. But if we're talking beyond a year, we're saying one to, you know, one years and on, then you have a decision to make whether or not you want to invest in protecting your sperm count or not. So this is a very controversial situation. So technically speaking, permanent hypogonadism, right? Permanent shutdown um, is something that we can't say medically is not possible. Yet, I have, I have yet to meet a single individual that has ever experienced permanent hypogonadism. There is a ton of literature showing men that very successfully were able to completely recover their access, completely recover their sperm production through the aid of a powerful recovery system. In many cases, just stopping therapy. But there's also very powerful peptides uh, that you can take and a few medications to really turn on and restore function and restore sperm production. So given that, you have two options. If kids are in the future of that one plus years and on, you could either spend extra money during your program and invest in peptides, uh, peptides like HCG or gonadarelin, for example, which are going to keep your sperm production active while you're on TRT. Because remember, when you're on testosterone, there's a negative feedback loop, and it's going to suppress your own production of testosterone, therefore suppressing your own production of sperm. But concurrently taking your TRT uh, with things like this, for example, these, these peptides that stimulate production, the theory is, the idea that is that you can maintain your own sperm production, Or the other path is not worry about it. And when you're ready to have kids, then you decide to uh, turn on your own production. This is the path that I personally chose because of my comfort level. And uh, it will be a conversation that you can have with our clinician. Either way, we're here to support you, whether or not you want to make the extra investment. And in some cases, you just want to roll with the treatment and improve your quality of life. That's completely fine. So what are the methods here? We really have two methods that I would recommend to any men, injections or creams. I would stay away from oral trochies because oral trochies, while they're great for women, they just don't work as well with men because there's too much testosterone that needs to be absorbed and it's just not effective for a man, but great for women. And so when I see those companies advertising online for oral oral trochies for men, they, they clearly is a clinic that doesn't know what the hell they're doing. So I would recommend staying away from that. You need to look at these two methods of injections and creams. Me personally, I use a cream. Injections are great. This is totally preference. If we're going to go the cream route, then you're going to be applying the cream ideally twice a day for more stability. You can apply it once a day. But for me, I I have this really awesome formula where I apply it uh, in the morning. I apply it on my testicles. And then in the evening, I apply it behind my knees. Why do I do that? Well, testicular application is actually one of the best areas. You can also do in your elbows and you can do in your behind your knees where there's a lot of circulation, but testicular application um, has been shown, and I personally can attest to it for better absorption and uh, some, some even stronger uh, DHT production. So ideally, I would do it on my testicles twice a day. But then we have to think about testicles touching my partner, right? And that's something for you to consider too as well. So if you don't have a partner, great. I would do testicular application, but you do have this five hour window that you have to think with. And so for me, and I think most men sort of follow this pattern, most people where if I have sex in the morning, it's going to be in the morning, kind of before I do my bathroom routine. So then I do my bathroom routine. I start the day, bam, I'm good. Five hours on that work. And then when I come home, generally, I think most people follow this too as well, where it's like, I've been out all day. I'm going to shower anyways before I have fun. So at this point, I'm already out of the shower. I may or may not have sex. And I'm not going to sit there and have this conversation with my girlfriend and say, hey, are we, are we having sex tonight? <laughs> Maybe you guys can do that. I don't know. That gets really um, interesting to say the least. So for me, I just put it behind my knees and then bam, I'm ready to go. If, if, the, uh, 
if the moment calls, if you know what I mean. So favorite for me, cream, but some men though, this, you have to remember, this is going to be case by case. Uh, some men are going to report better on injections. Some are going to report better on cream. So personally, I recommend choosing the method that makes the most amount of sense to you, what you feel more comfortable with. And if there's an issue, we can always switch later. But with the injections, your options are either intramuscular or subcutaneous. Most men nowadays are, optim are opting for a subcutaneous injection, which makes a lot of sense because it's into the fat tissue. The needle's much smaller. It's much easier. And we're injecting either once or twice a week for stability. Anything less than once a week is just not stable enough. So you want more stability in your levels. And that's going to be accomplished from either a once or a twice a week. In some rare cases, maybe even three times a week. But Again, like that just kind of gets into the ability, interferes with maybe your ability to adhere to it. You'll have this conversation with the medical team, especially if you work with us to figure out which path makes the most amount of sense. So now let's talk a little bit about the functional side of things. And again, this is one of the things that really separates us because simply starting testosterone therapy and not making other improvements in your health, you are severely missing the boat. Yes, you will get some direct benefit of changing nothing, but you can significantly enhance your results by implementing some better lifestyle choices. And if you are overweight, holy crap, getting the weight loss at the same time, now you're exploding through the path of improving your quality of life. So just some of the categories that we coach our patients in every single week for just being our, our patients, we have these group coachings, supplements. Supplements are part and parcel, very, very important towards optimal health, both on TRT and off. And so we put our patients onto an optimized supplemental regimen, both AM and PM to ensure there's no micronutrient deficiencies. Uh, resistance training out of the training category, hands down the most important form of working out that you could possibly do. We've already mentioned it before. You literally live longer as you age with more muscle mass on your body. And testosterone now is your opportunity to enhance and build and put more muscle mass on your body. So you don't want to miss the boat. You want to improve your health by getting some solid resistance training and we'll help you with all that. And then of course, optimizing stress, optimizing sleep. This is a big deal. Testosterone can improve sleep, but there's so many other science backed strategies and things that we will coach you in and we will help you with to improve your quality of sleep. And these things are not so known as far as what can we do for the environment. And then also how do we best manage our stress? There's a lot of various stress management techniques too as well. So getting control of this is very much going to enhance your results on testosterone therapy. Okay, so what do we do if we're obese? What do we do if we're very overweight, very sick, completely unmotivated, looking forward to the benefit of testosterone therapy. This is interesting because a lot of clinics will just throw you on the therapy and, and not even flinch. For us, if you are in that category, we will only accept you for care if you are at least telling us that you plan to make lifestyle improvement. It's one thing to not have the motivation and feel and, and just because you don't have the drive and the ability to do it, but but still being able to communicate that Ideally, if you felt better that you would be working out, that you would be making some choices, then we will be willing to work with you. The problem is very clear. I've, I've never seen an obese man who didn't start a weight loss program, not run into issues, sometimes as, as quick as, as two months. Sometimes the therapy won't even work at all. If you've ever, and maybe some of you guys are watching this and maybe you tried testosterone therapy and maybe there was a tiny little bit improvement. Maybe there was really, really good, but it went away all these different versions and flavors are likely due to the poor metabolic health, high levels of inflammation, excess levels of body fat. And you didn't work with a clinic that gave a shit that put it together for you and set you up with a plan. And lasting weight loss is my bread and butter is something that we specialize in. And we use powerful peptides like GLP one medication, some of glutide or zepatide, but we put it together in a very powerful practical program for you to uh, implement and so if you actually are curious about how that works, I definitely gonna want to check out this video right here where I get into our protocol um, and uh, learn a lot more about how we help our patients with lasting weight loss. If you guys enjoyed watching this video, then you're definitely going to want to check out Peptide 101. So peptides are powerful messengers similar to hormones, but they're different. They don't act just like hormone therapy does, and they have also systemic powerful benefits. And so 
Peptides 101 is the most practical guide out there on peptides. So check that out. We'll see you guys later.